playing. Uh, wait, February? Is that Chris? What's the exact date? January 22nd. It's this big one here. Okay. The Great Salvage Banhammer. The most shocking and unexpected wave of bans that have ever happened in Final Fantasy XI took place on January 2nd, 2009. Some players who exploited duping practices in instance zones were banned either permanently or temporarily. The exploit occurred by splitting a bunch of XP potions into individual ones and then an alliance after defeating a monster and obtaining a drop. The treasure obtained remained in the pool instead of being lost as it normally would. This allowed the item, including Alexandrite, Cells, and even Rare EX Armor, to be duplicated two additional times. Approximately 550 accounts who were found guilty of duplicating items in instant zones were delivered a permanent ban, while 400 others received a temporary ban. Jesus Christ, 550... Those aren't bots, those are players. 550 accounts... These numbers were not nearly as high as the monthly special task force results, but nearly all of them were popular and well-known players. Oof. Oof. Almost all endgame link shells on every world were somehow affected by it. At least one significant player being banned. Among these players was Mini Dragon from Bismarck. He was quite possibly one of the no first North American mats cap on any world, but was for sure... Uh, the first on Bismarck. All of his jobs at the time were 75. He had all of the best items, including these rings and stuff. And he had six relics, which was unheard of. He was quoted to have spent one billion gil on his first relic. He was known to many as the ultimate FF11 player at the time. His profile can be found here. <sighs> Permaband. Uh, the not of the west uh, the west perspective immediately after the bannings the various ff11 communities exploded with heated arguments and debates on both sides of the banhammer some cried out against the severity and inconsistency of the punishments while the rest deemed it an appropriate and fair recourse players compared square Enix's management to world of warcraft saying how there were very little permanent bans in wow compared to squeeze's harsh judgment Blizzard would instead strip a player of all the proceeds and from such glitches instead of outright ban and temp ban them. Uh, I mean, not entirely true. But definitely not 550. <laughs> Those lucky enough to only receive a temp ban did not have their armor removed, which really caught everybody by surprise. Players who were affected felt as if they were treated the same as RMT, which are actually destroying the game. Many wanted an answer as to why players were treated inconsistently in this banning. Some players who went on only one salvage run were given a permanent ban when they might not have even known what was going on or that the dupe even happened. At the same time, some leaders who were the instigators of the dupe were only given temporary bans. Justice was not dealt fairly and this is where much of the controversy originated from. What made the whole situation worse is that this glitch had not, was not fixed until an emergency maintenance in November 2008. Around two years after its discovery? Bro, you can't be permabanning something. No, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, 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 no. Uh, okay, I see the controversy now. That's bullshit. I, I did my mistake because they left it open for two days and figured they didn't care. Two years? Two years and then went on a permaban rampage. That meant that people who knew of this were able to keep it on the down low for at least a quarter of the game's life. Many players' argument was how could you allow hundreds of end game link shells to exploit what was clearly a very significant glitch but only act after two years? It's a fair argument. It's a fucking fair argument. Two years, dude. The FF11 parody website, Bannable Offenses, left a post where the bans which, uh, about the bans, which was stated that staff at the Square Enix offices in California were surprised. This made players assume that it must have come from Japan. Speaking of GM Dave, it was confirmed later on, on that GM Dave was not actually a real GM. In actuality, he was a player who was spoofing his identity and posting on the blog for humorous reactions. It did work, however. Players believed the stories due to how authentic they seemed to be. <laughs> Just trolling. Just trolling. 
The Blue Gaia community was greatly affected. This included significant players who provided a lot of knowledge of game mechanics to the community. Including a player who shared the final stages of completing a mythic weapon. Many players disliked BG as a whole as it was regarded as the elitist community. BG was blamed for hiding this information from Squeenix. But it was confirmed that the problem was reported to Square Enix before discussion threads were deleted. Shut up, dude. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, we're going to 2chan. The following perspective is a digest post made by Elmer the Pointy that was on jpbutton.com. The majority of 2chan posts on this day consisted of Zama Miro or Zamaya Mayagara, shortened to this. All of these mean the same thing. In your face. Literally, though, this meant look at the situation or how do you like them apples? <laughs> Does this mean the Japanese community did not cheat? No. There were, all, uh, there were only two channel private blogs that Japanese players flocked to. Counter arguments situations were rare, were simply lost to the popular threads. Were Japanese players banned? Who knows, as they did not come forward and admit that they were. Even if they did, the anonymity of 2chan and other blog sites left no way for us to identify them like the English websites. It was seen that they were checking out the BG forum ban list thread to see the names of those that were banned. In the end, there wasn't much in the way of juicy, gopit, juicy gossip as the North American community. It's counter to their high valuation of personal privacy. And uh, really, who would volunteer to jump in and be roasted with a response? News sites throughout the internet cover this story. A lot of bad publicity against Squeenix. I'd never even heard of this. It was spread throughout the gaming community. And some say this begun the gradual decline of the popular population of FF11. Who would want to play a game if the creator's policy was, we can ban you for any reason? Yeah, I, this is the first time I'd heard about this. Perhaps the most amusing part of this whole situation was the sense of invulnerability that the exploiters felt. Below are a few quotes, quotes from players who frequented the BG forums. Many of these were banned. LOL. The people who should deserve to know, knew. Those that didn't, didn't. You pause. It's as simple as that. It was kept quiet so to keep the high and mighty people who deemed this sort of behavior as inappropriate from reporting it in mass scale and ruining it for those of us who enjoyed gaining our just rewards. Do salvage four to seven times a week for a year. Complete a whopping piss poor two to three pieces and then come back with your QQing, bitch. <laughs> It's just as if not more likely that a Japanese player spilled the beans. Ah, oh, well, at least I got an Ares flagship for my 37 Dark Knight. <laughs> the process used in game mechanics with zero hacks or forced cheats, i.e. pieces of shit hacking the game, uh, hacking the game data on a computer, changes it and sends false data packets back to Screenix. This is illegal as it is doing something outside of the game. As such, they're not going to ban anyone because no one technically cheated in the black and white sense of the word. Ah, yes. Technically, it's an unintended use of game mechanics. Technically, it's an unintended use of game mechanics. It's not actually cheating. Okay. <sighs> Go cry me a river. We had 100 salvage pieces completed by uh, Link Shell intern groups before we found out about it. If you had any friends that would trust you, you might have known about it before it got fixed, winky face. <laughs> you just weren't cool enough to know about it, you fucking geeks. <laughs> hey, look at my jobs. Look at my salvage gear. Do you really want to think this fix hits me as hard as you want to? Yeah, get wrecked, noob. Wow. Two years. That, I think that's unjust for a permanent ban. I think you've got to accept some fucking self-responsibility. You let something go for two years. Right? God, I haven't seen this clip in forever. Vision. The 
das ist sie doch immer. Oh, oh, it's still going, okay. <laughs> I haven't got to the good bit. Oh, the band hammer cometh. Verstanden, dass ich nach Ihrem Entschluss in der Festung Berlin zu verbleiben, als Ihr Stellvertreter sofort die Gesamtführung des Reiches übernehme. Mit voller Handlungsfreiheit nach innen und außen. Falls bis 22 Uhr keine Antwort erfolgt, nehme ich an, dass Sie Ihre Handlungsfreiheit beraubt sind. Ich werde dann zum Wohle von Volk und Vaterland handeln. Fuck up, you cheating cunts! This is made by an Englishman and I appreciate it. Ich sehe das anders. Göring will die Macht an sich reißen. Diese Mischburke, die sich am Obersalzberg um ihn rottet, war mir noch nie geheuer. Das riecht nach Putsch. Görings Sorge ist nicht so ungerecht. Wenn unsere Kommunikationssysteme zusammenbrechen und das kann stündlich geschehen, dann sind wir in der Tat von der Welt abgesprochen. Kopie. Befehle und Anweisungen können dann Kopie. nicht werden. Ich habe den Gefäß schon nicht verlegt. Nach Westen, wir sollen nach Westen. Wie sollen wir hier noch führen? Ich stehe tausend Meter vor dem Feind. Die kommt rein. Ja, Gott, was ist los? Woher kommt der Schiss herein? Mein Führer, darf ich Ihnen zum Geburtstag gratulieren? Mein Führer, das Zentrum von Berlin steht unter Artilleriegeschoss. Granaten sind in dichter Folge am Brandenburger Tor, am Reichstag und bis hin zum Bahnhof Friedrichstraße eingeschlagen. Von vor kommt der Beschuss. Mein Führer, wir haben noch keine Meldung. Ich spreche gerade mit Koller. Koller, geben Sie mir Koller. Koller. Sie wissen, dass Berlin unter Artilleriefeuer... Prophet, do it again. Right, right. Man müsste die ganze Luft auf dem Führung sofort erreichen. Das ist unerhört. Unerhört. Der Russe steckt fünf Kilometer vom Stadtkern. Und ich erfahre das sozusagen auf Nachfrage. This is fucking genius. Papa, wieso hast du denn deine Sonntagsuniform an? <lacht> So, Hilfe. Jetzt musst du aber auch mal was wissen. I must see this part. What the was fuck? Der Zeitpunkt ist da, wir sollten das Spektakel beenden. Was soll denn das heißen? Wollen Sie, dass wir aufgeben? Das ist undenkbar. Der Führer hat immer erklärt, wir kapitulieren nicht. Ein November 1918 wird sich nicht wiederholen. Niemals! Aber Sie haben es doch selbst gehört, er will nicht mehr führen. Tun Sie, was Sie wollen, das waren exakt seine Worte. Keiner hier kann ihn ersetzen, keiner. Der Führer <lacht> ist der Führer. Und sonst haben wir jede Chance verspielt. Sie wollen doch nur Ihren Kopf halten! Ich verbitte mir diesen Ton. Mit Befehl. 
listen to them beatles bro oh es ist unmöglich unter diesen umständen zu führen es ist aus der krieg ist verloren How sad. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> He's gotta go play for how. <laughs> it's, off it. it's about the FF11 situation. 550 accounts were banned for exploit over two years. Unbelievable. Oh, fucking savage. Well, that was a history lesson.